Um, hi, everybody. Um, welcome. This is Wednesday night with Kenny and Glenn and myself and Cassidy in the background. Um, this is our second presentation. Um, and this is all to help us understand better and reinforce what we already know. Uh, I have to do the disclaimer that uh, that you remember and promise that you understand that this is highly experimental and is not approved for therapy. Uh, you take full responsibility for building and running your system and you do so at your own risk. Just quietly say to yourself, I do, amen, and we're good to move on. So uh, off we go, Kenny, it's yours. Okay, so um, let's see, we'll also add that um, uh, this is not medical advice. Anything I say is um, my understanding of loop and what works for my daughter. If you make changes to you or your child's settings, um, that's on you. Good. Okay, overrides. Someone asked about overrides last time and we didn't cover them. So there's a link to the loop docs page about overrides, about what it does, what it doesn't do. I tried to grab the highlights for you. So what an override is, you can see kind of this overall insulin need, big bar in the middle here on the rightmost picture. That is a, a change, like it says in the notes there, of basal, bolus, and um, ISF, or correction insulin doses, um, by whatever percentage you set. So 100% is normal, whatever your settings are. So if you do 130%, that's 30% more. Uh, multiplying everything by basically 0.3, except ISF because it's backwards, right? Um, goes down, not up. So everything is stronger, or you need more insulin overall for everything. That means carb ratios too. So if you get into a situation where you're using, uh, I've seen people do this, a 20% override. Don't do it, by the way. But then they go and they enter carbs, Um then their carb ratio is now 20% of what it was. Uh, and they're confused why they're high for three or four hours. It's because the system thinks that all those carbs, that 60 carbs you entered, needs almost no insulin compared to normal. And you can't really fix that. You can't cancel the override. Uh, you, you might, I've seen mixed results trying to delete the carb entries and then adding the carbs in like after the override was canceled. But if you forgot to cancel it altogether, then you're really just stuck. You may have to, the only fix I always recommend for someone who gets in that situation is to basically add as many carbs as it takes to get the ratio back correct. So if you entered 10 carbs and you used a 50% override on accident when you were eating, um, then you would need to basically enter twice as many carbs to get the similar effect. Because that's the way that's what Loop's going to see, how it's going to see which, how much insulin you need. So you need to enter 20 carbs. So edit the entry to say 20 and then at least you'll be close, assuming you've turned off the override. So don't do it. Um, good uses for it. Uh, target changes. You don't have to change the overall insulin need. It can stay 100%. Um, that top one I have in Tessa's example there, they're going low one. Um, it only changes the target to 100 to 130 from our normal 85 to 100. And it only does it, as you can see, kind of on the right, right here, it says for one hour. Um, so it times out, too. It doesn't have to be indefinite. You can make it run for a scheduled amount of time, and you can pick just a target. So if you want to change your target for exercise or, um, like me, you hand the kids off to Grandpa, who lets them run around way more um, and do silly things. So you just might want to set it a little higher um, just because it's a better idea. So you might use that. Um, using it for sickness, typically when – uh, BGs go up when you need more insulin. Uh, I do find this is what fascinated me about using overrides is um, they actually work really well for being sick. So once your settings are solid, once your basal is good, carb ratio is pretty good, and sensitivity is pretty good, um, you'll find that overrides work really well for things like just temporary insulin need shifts, um, like sickness. It, it's incredible to watch it work. It's not just a basal change. Your normal sick day protocol is to you know, increase your basal, for example, but I don't know of any endos that often tell people to strengthen their carb ratios and correction factors or ISF as well. But by doing that, um, you, can do what's called, you can do a basal test, which again, we'll talk about next time, while the override's on to figure out what basal you need, but you'll find that it just works really well. So 
for Tessa, my go-to, and she's usually running a little high at night, indicating she's sick or something. And I run a 130. Using stronger carb ratio, in addition to the stronger basal, works super well. Um, keeps our day pretty normal looking from a graph perspective. If I showed you most of our sick days and most of our normal days, you probably couldn't tell the difference between the two other than the overnight when it sort of reared its ugly head. So Kenny, um, we're getting a, cut, a lot of feedback here um, on overrides. Some people, you love them for exercise. Um, exercise. Yeah. Uh, third day of uh, the pod, I do that. Uh, Cassidy's got that. I, yep. I do a WTF on the third day. <laughs> Yeah, you do. 20% more. Yeah. I said shopping at Target or Home Depot, you know, you might need an override. But, sure. Um, and particularly, um, as Linda says as well, um, for cortisone injections or if you need a... Uh, yeah, anything that's really going to radically change your sensitivity is a good a good thing to use it for. Um, if you're stressed at work or at school, or your kid's stressed at school, um, those can be useful there too. But um, you do have to kind of watch those large overrides because they can screw up other settings. Yeah. Like so we'll get they to can, the do they start getting out of balance. Yeah. I'll get to the obvious do nots. Um, and then there's there's obviously lots of exceptions and uh, more examples of not to use these. But, but, but on that, on, if you're using it for prednisone or cortisone, yeah. uh, you, you need the percentage override across the board. And, totally. Yeah. And oh, yeah, it's true. Yeah. You, you've done that recently. Did you find after we made some changes to your settings that it worked really well for that? It did. And it always has for that. And you need everything to be increased at that point because all the things. Playing. Yeah. So, and then you just, as it gets out of your system, you need to be backing it off. So if you're 200%, take it down to 175 or 150% and keep mm -hmm. on backing it and watching it real clear carefully. Yeah. And so similar to that, like sickness, you may see um, the needs change even day to day for sickness. So Tessa might be a 120 one day, 150 the next, 150 for maybe two days and back down to 130 and then have a 180. Right. Um, but you, see, you might be playing with it a little bit, and I, what we'll cover about testing basal will help you figure out which one to use, but it's uh, surprisingly helpful. So I keep telling our nurse practitioner who we meet with and just show her our sick days and, and good days and say, when you have people, tell them to strengthen everything, not just basal. That way you're not really overdoing the basal, because usually that's what happens is people like, oh, we'll raise your basal by 50%, but I find a 20 or 30% increase for most people if their settings are pretty solid and loop works really well. Um, to kind of I, I heard an interesting uh, temp increase uh, from Wes Nordgren when he drove down from Northern California with his son and he'd put a, a road trip override. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we've seen that mixed. Um, sometimes it doesn't seem like we need it, but the last couple of road trips we've taken when there's only one parent in the car, <laughs> um, it was, it was needed. Like it just, my daughter is not super active, so her sitting for multiple hours usually isn't a problem. So sitting in the car shouldn't be a big deal. And so it can be hard to say, is it, um, especially when you have kids, is it because you're normally moving around and you're not? Are you more stressed when you're in the car that long? Or um, in my daughter's case, are you eating more cookies or pretzels than you told mom you were going to eat? And <laughs> <laughs> so then you're, well, you're trying not, to catch up with it. You're not moving as yeah. much. And certainly if anyone's planning to get married, your wedding day, you're going to run high. Yes, yes, yes. Stress, things like that are great for right? extended stress. not ha Happy stress. Yeah, not temporary stuff. So do not use these for like uh, rises in blood sugar from meals that maybe you messed up on or even like shorter um, bursts of stress or excitement. Right. Um, like my daughter goes to a thing at our church and she has to memorize Bible verses and when she memorizes and tries to recite it, she gets a little stressed trying to, you know, do it right or presents or sings in front of a group. Um, not a good time for an override because it's going to fade relatively quickly. Um, and then falls. I see this all the time. Do not use low overrides when you're falling. It's not going to stop the fall. It's not magically going to make the insulin stop working. What it's going to do is it's going to cause a high later because you've told the system that your basal is, you know, half or 20% of what it normally is. And so it's going to subtract less insulin as it turns off. And we'll talk about basal more, but when we talked about it, calculate subtracting the, from the active insulin when it's got that lower bar. Um, if you change it to 20%, it's going to subtract a lot less insulin every minute than it would normally if you just left it alone. Um, so what happens is then Luke later thinks you have a lot more insulin in your body than you do. 
because if you've been falling for an hour, let's say, and you ran in a crazy overhead like 20%, then it thinks you have more insulin later. So then when you start going back up from treating the low that ends up happening, it's not going to help you because it thinks you have way more insulin on board than you really do. So don't use don't use overrides for spikes and falls just bolus or treat like just let it let it do its thing um and then what happens is you treat the low and then you maybe eat and then you forget to turn off the override and it's just craziness so it's only going to cause problems uh use extreme you don't use extreme percentage changes generally speaking i'd say anything lower than 50 percent, and 50 percent is pretty crazy too like you might only use that for like a stomach bug kind of sick day um, I really don't see a need for that typically for most people. Um, over 150, again, I, I can be caught using 200 occasionally. And I've done, like I said, 180 when she's sick occasionally. Um, but generally speaking, you shouldn't have a lot of need for more than 150 unless you have, you know, <laughs> unless you, you have a, you're a female and you have um, hormones to deal with a few times a month um, or you're really sick. So I'm not saying you can't use them. I'm just saying use them with caution and use them knowing exactly what it is that they're doing. Um, don't just throw a 200 on because you're mad that the spike is happening. These are not, um, as Katie puts in the docs, these are not sledgehammers. Like there are a lot of people think that you should turn on a 200 and Luke should instantly be giving more insulin. What it's doing primarily is changing your basal. And so just like a new basal rate would take a couple of hours to really kick in, you're not going to see the impact till later. You're not paying attention to whatever the immediate situation is. Same thing is going to happen with loop. It's changing your basal and it's going to change slowly the calculation of how much insulin you have on board and therefore take action. So, and you're going to feel it later. It's going to mess your whole day up if you're using it when you shouldn't. So um, I would say it's really, really important to only use percentage change overrides when a true basal need shift is around. Exercise is even one of those that is arguable, and we'll cover that more, but we've been experimenting with it with Cassidy, right? So what I think really change happens is your sensitivity is what changes during exercise, at least shorter exercise, an hour or two. Um, your body's need for background insulin might be suppressed for a little while, but it catches up with you later, which I think is one reason why you often have a high after exercise. Um, and so if you leave the your basal at 100%, but change your sensitivity, which is much less convenient, I'll be honest, um, and like increase that for the period you're gonna be exercising, then uh, you most likely will not have this big high that follows. Cassidy tried that once with a run, right Cassidy? I've been trying it with a lot of different exercises. It's hard though. Um, it's been definitely, uh, what has been most effective is insulin sensitivity factor changes, whether that's higher or lower, depending on the exercise that I'm doing. And then an override, but the override is non-insulin model changing. It's only target changing. Is that um, working pretty well still? I haven't been keeping it. Yeah, it's still working really well, actually. I, I actually think ISF mind think is uh, different with loop than than before we were all looping. And I think we tend to think ISF applies to boluses. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a real shift to start thinking, oh my gosh, it's effective the whole time on yeah. any insulin. So uh, we'll dive more into this topic. You guys can ask more questions around this topic, especially when we get to basil and maybe we have some time tonight here. I may have to stop before we get to the carb thing, but um, okay. And remote overrides. So you'll see my example here in my leftmost example. I had to show you I'm going low, um, 50, 70, 80, 90, 110, and I go all the way up to 200. Um, I do that just because whatever your presets you make is what shows up in Night Scout as a remote override, as an option. So I like to have all my options available. So when I'm remote overriding my daughter, like trying to figure out what the right one is when she's sick, for example, we might go 130, 140, back and forth a little bit really fine-tuning it and i want to be able to do that when she's at school so um so yeah that's i like to have all the options available so if you want an option available to you when you're using remote overrides make sure it's created um and you can always the cool thing about remote overrides is you can add a time to any of these so if i wanted to just run a 150 for you know 30 minutes i could do that 
if you want to try something that I've been trying, which is I'll run like a 200 for five minutes. That means one loop cycle. It means I'm kind of hoping that I can trick loop into giving like a 0.05 bolus um, using the auto bolus branch. Um, it won't do you any good if you're not using auto bolus because it's just enough to not really mess with the basil. Um, it's only for five minutes. So um, that's just kind of a little cheater way of trying to get a remote bolus in. It doesn't work all the time, so it's probably not worth the effort, but, you know, that's what I do. Okay. Ooh, okay. Uh, any questions? Right, here's, a, here's an override question. So changing the target in an override as loop uses target to land you after six hours, does it really make a difference? Good question. So the current correction range, or in this case, the override with the target change, is what loop is really trying to land you. So even if I use the going low one there that only lasts an hour, um, it, it's kind of overriding what loop's looking at into the future. So it's still trying to make the six hour or four, three hours, whatever's left in the current insulin's runtime. Um, it's making that the range it's using it's looking at way out into the future so using a temporary override now with just a target change does in fact make a difference it's not what your bg is now let's be clear about that it's what it's going to be like where it's going to land but it's changing the landing range uh do you use a post low override to keep ab from being too aggressive when you're coming up from uh, the low Fantastic question. Um, so if you have good basil or you learn next time how to fix very quickly a, a incorrect basil, um, you shouldn't really need one. I do occasionally if I'm a little confused about what's happening um, or if she's not with me um, and it's been treated, I may use this going low for an hour. That bumps her range up about, she's usually about 85 to 85 at night. So it bumps her up a good amount there to 100 to 130. Um, so I do use it occasionally, really not that much anymore now that uh, now that we're on all bullets, actually I use it less. <laughs> um, but again, it's having good basil and knowing how to set that. I would say that 70 or 80% of the cases I'm helping people um, and they're having trouble with that is because their basil's off. It's not a um, carb issue or... Um, sensitivity or suspend issue. It's a basal problem and it won't go away until it's fixed. Um, no matter how hard you try, unless you open loop or fix it in Apple Health, which we'll talk about 